I mean, we, we all see it on the news, right? We, we never expected to land as close as it did. Um, so when, when I got the news, I'm like, this, somebody's making this up. This isn't true, somebody got the wrong info. If you don't know the full story of what happened in Glenn Foster Jr., I suggest you hit the pause button and do a quick Google search. But here are the cliff notes. Glenn Foster Jr. is believed to have been killed by sheriff's deputies in Pickens County, Alabama. He was brought in for a traffic stop and found dead in police custody just days later. Neither security footage or body camera footage has been made public in the nearly three months since this has happened by Alabama law enforcement. He leaves behind a wife, daughters, and a host of family and friends. One of those friends, Wayne Clark. Mr. Wolf Espresso was a joint venture between Clark and Foster. The concept was simple. Mixed art, coffee, books, and a heavy dash of blackness. Oh, it's blackity black. <laughs> By design. By design. Clark says the business came to be simply because Glenn believed in him. It was, it was my idea, my, my vision for things. He was the one pushing everything. It's like, oh, that's what you want, let's, let's do it. If that's what you need, let's do it. It's, it's something he threw together. If there's nothing else you take away from this story, let it be that this is who Glenn Foster was to all of his friends. Gordon and Wayne, once Glenn believed in you, he became unbelievably supportive. You, you see this cat every single day, and uh, it's always the exact same energy. It's like, this can't be real. <laughs> and, it, and it still feels unreal. But then you meet all of these folks that you don't have a relationship with, but they all do, and they all have the same exact story, the same exact feeling about this person. Lucky for Clark, he now gets to see his friend every day. Visual artist Daquan Forcell painted this portrait of Glenn Jr. I'm happy, I'm excited, I'm grateful, humble. I'm, I'm just glad people get the experience and see it and they're enjoying it. For Clark, a constant reminder of one of his fondest memories of his old friend. We, we used to laugh at how he used to come in and, and did whatever he wanted to do on his espresso machine. And I'd be like, Glenn, get, get out of the kitchen, man. <laughs> get out of the kitchen, dude. And now you look back there, it's this big smile on his face. And it's like... The last three months have been a pure test of will for Wayne. He says trying to remain hopeful for justice is starting to feel like a lost cause. He says with so many black men dying at the hands of police, he fears Glenn's story will be lost in the noise. He says it's up to him and the many people Glenn poured into to make sure that doesn't happen. What leverage do we have outside of our voice, outside of making sure we're, we're out there and continuing to keep the story going? Wayne's story is one of many that I'm planning to tell. There's so many people that I've met that need to tell Glenn's story. Man, and that's what we're gonna do, really good, one man. story at a time. How did this come to go?